welcome to the next topic of discussion which is on angular measurement. In engineering, if we know to draw a straight line and draw a arc, right? So, then we, we can split any complicated geometry into lines and arcs. So, if I know to draw this, then I can to a large extent generalize saying that I can draw any complex structures. In the same analogy, if you take it for measurements, if I know to measure a straight line and if I am able to measure a arc in terms of angle and radius, then I can measure any complicated geometries uh, given to me. So, of course, you have to build up your setup such that you try to measure the angular one. So, in angular measurement here, we are more focused towards the angle between two features or between two lines, the angle which is subtended. It can be in, used in gears, it can be used in threads, thread profile measurement, it can be also used for jigs okay, and it can also be used for jibs. Okay. So, here are some of the places where this angular measurement plays a very, very important role. If you look at the angular measurement, these are some of the devices which we as and when we go, we will see it in detail. You can see here there is a scale okay, the, or there is a flat plate or a flat base. This is a reference for the entire instrument. This reference should butt against another reference which is perfect. Then only you can start measuring uh, the angles. If the reference surface is not butting against a, uh, a given standard reference, then these instruments will try to give error because it is a relative measurement which it takes. Suppose if there is a error between the two reference planes, then that angle will also get added to your or uh, to your uh, result whatever you see. So, in this topic we will try to see first introduction, then we will try to see protractors which we use it right from the school age, this is still used. Then we will see an universal bevel protractor, then sign bar, sign center, measurement of inclines, spirit level which is commonly used, clinometer and finally, autocollimeter we will be using it. Autocollimeter are used for measuring precise angles uh, which is there on a flat surface. Okay, moment I know the angle you can convert it into uh, the degrees can be converted into distance, you can convert into microns and you can report the result. The standard of an angle which is derived with relation to a circle is not man made but exist in nature. One may call it degree or radians, this will be the units. See in metrology, what we do is we it is a science of measurement here what we do is we will try to have a magnitude and then we will have try to have a units. These units are very, very important. Okay. It can be in microns, it can be in radians. Now, once it is in radians you can play back and get it into a linear scale in microns and this is the magnitude which is given. So, so 10 microns, 10 degrees. When we start looking into uh, the linear measurement, the we will always use to report it in terms of microns, millimeter, meter, all those things. When we try to go measure the angle, we always try to report it in terms of degrees and radians. If you are, uh, if we wanted to take this degree and then convert it into a linear scale, then we try to convert the units from degrees to uh, microns or millimeter. Okay. One may call it as degree or radians, but the fact remains that it has a direct relationship to circle which is an envelope of a line moving both about one of its edges. Angle is defined as the opening between two lines which meets at a point. So, if two lines, if the definition is not properly done, so opening between two lines which never meet, you will never get an angle. So, when we want to measure an angle, this is a very, very important point which meet at a point. Sometimes the primary objective of an angle measurement is not to measure angle, but to assess the alignment of a machine part.
many a times when several of these parts are assembled together to form a sub assembly or a complete product the, uh, the angle measurement is very very important. The angle reading is measured for the error of misalignment for example, spindle run out okay, uh, when uh, spindle run out is there or the work piece run out. So, all these things can be easily found out. There is a wide range of instruments that uh, instruments from simple uh, simple scaled instrument to complex types that uses laser interferometer techniques for measuring the angle. A vernier protractor is an instrument we will see provided with a mechanical support or simply mechanism to, to position them accurately against a given work piece and lock the reading. So, in all these vernier caliper all these things we will always have a locking nut or locking screw which we keep it at an angle and then we lock it and then we pull it out from the work piece and then see what is the measurement. The spirit levels are also universally used for example, you have a very uh, very large surface plate and if you want to measure what is the deviation of a surface plate generally what we do is either we try to dial it at several points form a matrix and try to find out the variation or what we do is we use spirit level keep it at several locations and see where what is the uh, inclination of angle from the center towards both sides from there we try to find we get the angle measurement from the angle we try to find out what is the linear uh, error or the displacement. Okay. Spirit uh, level has, univer has universal application for aligning structural members such as beams and columns in various engineering fields. Majority of the masons use spirit level to measure whether this is flat surface. Conventional or electronic um, clinometer are instruments employed the basic principle of spirit level, but with very high resolutions. Finally, the collimator and uh, angle deckers which belong to the family of instruments refers to as the optical tools are also used for angular measurement. This is a simple protractor where in which we fix at the center in school days we use this. So, we fix at the center and then we have angle varying from 0 to 180 you can have 0 to 180 or which can continue up to 360 degrees here the least count can be 1 degree if it is a large diameter a protractor you can even have close to half a millimeter half a degree. For instance, the surface of the instrument should be parallel to the surface of the object. So, this is very important the surface of the instrument wherever it is placed should be parallel to the surface of the object and the reference line of the protractor should coincide perfectly with the reference line of the angle. So, this is a very very valid point the surface of the instrument should be parallel to the surface of the object point number 1 and the reference line of the protractor should coincide perfectly with the reference line of the angle. Okay. Simple protractor has lot of limitations which we all know while using however, a few addition or simple mechanism which could hold the main scale or a vernier scale and a rotatable blade can be used can make it very versatile. So, here what happens is you have only one you you have you you generally if you see a protractor also what we do is we make a dot reference on a piece of paper move the protractor dot there exactly match these two references and draw. Suppose if I wanted to draw on top of this protractor I wanted to draw a tangent then placing a scale on top of this will be next to impossible because it is radius and tangent is a scale. So, it will be very difficult for a for a line to stay in contact with a arc. So, you will get only a point. So, drawing a tangent is very difficult for this. So, in order to get out of such limitations what we do is we attach a main scale we attach a vernier scale and a rotary blade. So, that you can try to use it for versatile applications. There are two types of um, protractors which are advanced which is generally used one is called as universal bevel protractor the other one is optical bevel protractor. So, universal bevel protractor is different from that of our combination set. Okay. With combin combination set is different and this is different. So, these two are different please do not get confused universal bevel protractor it is this is how it looks like in a universal bevel protractor. So, you will have a blade okay. this blade will have a slot. Okay. So, here if you see there is a groove there is a slot which is there is a end mill which is made. 
So, this is at an angle of 60 degrees and here it is cut at some other angle it is 45 degrees. So, this also can be used for placing the referencing. Then in this blade you will see a fine adjustment knob which or a protractor which slides through which can slide. So, the protractor is clamped to the blade by a blade clamper and this in turn is clamped by this such that you make sure that this line uh, is, is in parallel or it is in coincidence with the measuring uh, object. So, then you will have a protractor which is at the bottom here is a magnifying lens because in order to show the in order to have a clarity in reading. So, here you see a lens which is attached and here you see a fine knob which is there which is used for slightly dialing up and down and you get the data. So, here is a reference plane it you can place the uh, entire scale with respect to this reference plane. If you want you can also place here uh, the object which is again an acute angle attachment this is at 90 degrees and this is at 30 degrees. So, you can see here these are the angles which are used to place the workpiece or dial the workpiece and make it flat and then place it then rotate the protractor to measure the reading we can use this as a reference surface. So, it is an angle measuring instrument capable of measuring angles within 5 minutes. The protractor dial is mounted on a circular cross section of the base. The protractor dial is graduated in degrees with every tenth degree numbered, so vernier. The slide blade is fitted into the dial, it may, it may be extended to either directions set at an angle to the base. The blade and the dial are rotated as uh, the units. The fine adjustments are obtained with a small knurled headed pinion that is used so that we can try to do fine adjustments and get the details. So, these are fine adjustment, adjustment knobs which are there so that we try to see the matching of this vernier and also the protractor angles. The protractor dial may be locked the spacing in the vernier is made in such a way that at least the least count corresponds to one tenth of a degree one twelfth of a degree. So, one twelfth of degree ok. Suppose you take uh, 60, 60 or 360 you can go get up one twelfth of it. So, calculation of the uh, least count value of one main scale division. So, then it is clear that 1 vernier division equals 1 twelfth of 23 degrees. As the dial rotates a vernier division starts from 5th minute up to 60th minute progressively coinciding with the main scale division until the 0th division of the vernier moves over the main scale division by 2 degrees. Therefore, the least count is the difference between 1 vernier division and 2 main scale division which is 1 twelfth or 5 minutes. So, sometimes the confusion arises reading the direction in which the vernier is to be read in uh, to eliminate the confusion we follow a simple rule the rule we should remember always read the vernier from 0 in the same direction that you read the dial scale this is also a very very important point a simple rule this rule has to be followed always read the vernier from 0 in the same direction that you read the dial scale. So, this is 0 on the same direction you read. So, this if you follow then there will be no confusion whether it is positive or negative and then you try to get the details. So, the angles and their supplements you can see here, here is a work piece. So, here is the base whatever we talked about, here is the protractor and here is a knob this is used to slide here ok. And uh, if we want to find out this angle so, this is beta, this is alpha. So, alpha plus beta will be alpha plus beta will be equal to 180 degrees. So, if you want to exclusively find alpha, it is going to be 180 minus beta. So, you get the angle beta and you get this angle whatever it is with respect to the flat surface. This angle can be measured by bevel protractor. Okay. The angle reads directly are those that are formed from the blade to the base counter clockwise we do it. If the angle of the whole part are being measured in quadrant 1 or quadrant 3, the angle can be read directly. 
if it is the other way it, it has to be converted if the angles of the work pieces are being measured in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So, if you see the quadrants are 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. These are the 4 quadrants if the angle of a work part are being measured in 1 or 3 the angle can be readily can be read directly from the scale. If the angle of the work part are being measured in quadrant 2 or 4 the actual angle are given by their supplements. Here also the angle can, can be directly read only in 2 quadrants namely 2nd and 4th. Okay. These angles are formed in clockwise direction from the blade to the base and the acute angle. The supplement 1 and 3 quadrants must be obtuse angle for the work part. So, when we move to the I will try to draw the angle suppose if you have a scale like this and then you have something like this as an angle. Okay. So, what we are trying to say is this is supplement and with respect to this, this is also supplement. Okay. This is the angle and here is also the angle we directly measure. Okay. This is for a blade which rotates in blade which rotates in clockwise direction. Suppose, if the blade rotates in anti clockwise direction then you will have a scale like this. Okay. So, this is a supplement and this is also a supplement. This is the angle which we measure and this is also the angle which we measure. right? So, this is for a blade which is turned in counter clockwise direction. If the blade rotates in the counter clockwise direction, so this is how we get the uh, supplement uh, detail. So, in 1 and 3, quadrants uh, use the obtuse angle for the workpiece which uh, which are held in these quadrants. So, optical protractor is the is a simple extension of the universal bevel protractor here we use a lens in the form of an eyepiece uh, is provided to facilitate easy reading of the projected scale. The blade is clamped to a dial by means of a blade clamper. So, if you look at it here is a working wedge you can keep an acute angle this is a base this is a clamp and here you have a small eye piece to look at the reading here is a blade which comes in contact with the work piece and then this is a blade clamping device what we use. It is almost very similar to that of a bevel protractor except for the optical thing which is visible. So, in vernier protractor the eye piece is attached on the top view of the vernier scale itself which together moves as a single unit over the stationary dial gate. So, the eye piece provides it in a magnified manner, the acute angle attached is provided to facilitate the acute angle on a work piece if you want to measure you can do it. Second thing a clamp is provided to lock for the reading, okay. there is a clamp which tries to try and then which, which prevents it from rotating. So, you look at the eye and then try to take the reading. So, you will have a vernier reading also here. The next device is going to be sign bar. Sign bar is a precision angle measuring instrument used along with slip gauges. So, what we do is here is a slip gauge, okay, here is a slip gauge. So, you put the slip gauge, you put the slip gauge at one end of the roller, one end of the roller you put the slip gauge. So, basically what you do is you keep an height and here what you do is you this is a flat surface now you place it at an incline and then you put the work piece here then dial it 
to find out what the 0. So, now what you have is you can try to figure out what is the height from the height you can convert this and find out what is the angle. Okay. It is a precision angle measuring instrument used along with a slip gauge. If you do not use a slip gauge this uh, instrument is of is not of big use. A sign bar is used to measure the angle base on a sign principle. So, you will have a top flat this is a top flat surface you have two rollers these roller dimensions are given as D and the, the center of the roller to the hair to the top of the flat surface is H and between two rollers the distance is L. The required angle is obtained when the difference in height between the two rollers is equal to the sign of the angle multiplied by the distance between the centers of the roller. So, the sign of angle theta formed between the upper surface of a sign bar and the surface plate which is the datum is given by so, what are we trying to say? We are trying to say you have a flat, then you have a you have some object right and the you have a roller yeah. on the other way around you have this you have one more roller here. So, this distance is L this distance is L okay. and this on top this is resting this is resting on a slip gauge this is a slip gauge of a height h right of a height h fine and uh, if you want to find out this angle I call it as a. So, then sin theta or a theta is equal to h by where h is nothing but the height difference height difference between rollers between rollers right and l is the distance between rollers so this is the important thing which is said as the sign of angle theta. Okay, this is the I said in the previous uh, slide which works on sign principle. So, this is the sign. So, sin theta equal to h by L right. Okay, therefore, L sin theta is always equal to h. So, now what will happen is you know this is a flat plate, this is flat, this is flat. So, with this we can try to figure out the h height is nothing but L into sin theta. By building the sin gauge to height h and placing the sin bar on a surface plate with one roller on top of the slip gauge the upper surface can be set to a desired angle with respect to the surface plate. So, here what we, we are trying to say is we are trying to say. So, 
this is 1, 2, maybe 3, maybe 4, right. And okay, so we have one more roller here. So, assume that this one is 100 millimeter okay, and it follows an arc. Okay, so, this is 60 degrees, this is 45 degrees. sorry this is 30 degrees this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees so the height if you see this will be 50 the same thing will be 70.71 and if you try to take this drop this height this will be 80 6.6 millimeters. So, you can see here for varying heights, when a building uh, by building a slip gauge of height h and placing the sign bar on the surface plate with one roller on the top of the slip gauge, the upper surface can be set to a desired angle. So, these are the angles with respect to the surface plate. So, no measurement. is required between the cylinders since this is a known length. No measurement is required because it is a known length. So, this is what we are given. So, 100 millimeter. So, the distance is 100 millimeter. You keep increasing. So, you see what is the uh, difference you get for varying measurements. So, what is the advantage of uh, sign, the sign bar? Sign bar is, uh, is uh, advantage is, is very precise and accurate. The design and construction are very quite simple. Uh, the availability is pretty high. Disadvantages becomes inaccurate with an increase in angle. So, when it grows more than 60 or 80, it becomes very difficult. Handling can be difficult sometimes. So, is positioning of a slip gauge, then tedious to help uh, uh, to be held in fixing positions. Slight error can cause a large angular error. So, now let us try to solve this uh, one, one numerical in this direction such that we can write numerical to solve in the sign bar. If length of a sign bar is 100 millimeter and the angle is 14 degrees is to be developed. Determine the height of the slip gauge and the size of the slips using set of M25 slip. We have studied that. So, given data, what is the given data? Given data is theta equal to 14 degrees and then L is the length between the rollers is 100 millimeter. So, what are they asking? They are trying to find out what is H. So, what is the formula sin theta equal to h by l, l is given. So, we know h equal to l into sin theta. So, h is nothing but 100 sin 14 degrees. So, this is nothing but 100 into 0 0.241 something like that. So, it is 24.1. 1 9. So, 1 9 millimeter this will be the h. Okay. So, it is a straightforward formula sin using the principles of sin. Uh, so, sin the sin theta this this sin bar length is fixed. So, the only this l and this h keeps changing from problem to problem. A sign center provides um, provides a means of measuring angle of conical work pieces that are held between centers. So, this is sign center. So, there are two centers dead center two, two live center and dead center or two dead centers. So, you can try to measure the conical work piece that is held between centers. One of the roller is pivoted about its axis thereby allowing the sign bar to be 
set at an angle by lifting the other roller. So, this roller you can lift it and then you can do. The base of the sign center has a high degree of flatness. The slip gauge are rung and placed on it set the sign bar at a required angle. A dial gauge clamped to the stand is set against a conical work piece. The sign bar is set at an angle such that the dial gauge registers no deviation when moved from one end of the work piece to the other end. The angle is, is determined by, by again applying the simple rule. So, what we are trying to say is we are trying to say you will have a sign bar. So, you will have a sign bar. and here you will have h okay these are nothing but slip gauge slip gauges so here you will have this one okay then what you do is you will try to put a this is a conical one this is a conical so this is between centers this is a conical workpiece so if you go back and see the base of the sign center has a high degree of flatness the dial gauge clamped to a stand is set against the conical work piece. We will set a dial here. The sign bar is set to an angle such that the dial gauge registered no deviation when moved from one end of the work piece to the other end. So, then what you will do is the angle is determined by applying the sign rule. So, now we will put a dial gauge, move it here and there and then try to figure out what is this height angle. The next one uh, is angle measurement. Uh, these are called as uh, feeler gauges. So, we can angle measurement which are made of high grade wear resistant steel work on the similar principle of slip gauges. So, you can try to measure the angle using the same concept like uh, slip gauges. You keep adding and then try to figure out what is the um, angle which is there subtended when the by the work piece. So, you can use this also and then use this combination to measure the angle measurement. So, the angle gauge uh, this can be rung together to build up a desired angle. They can be subtracted to form a smaller angle as a difference between two large angles. So, what we are trying to say is you can have a block okay, and then you can have. So, this entire thing will be now 35 degrees. So, this is a 30 degree block and this is 5 degree block, 5 degree block or a slip gauge whatever we are talking about. Suppose you would like to have this is 5 degree addition you can have the other way around is you can have 20 just giving you an example this is this is again a 30 degree block. And then what you do is you try to have in, in ulta direction, so in, in reverse direction and then you try it here what will be the angle is here, it is only 25 degrees. So, this is also a 5 degree block. So, here you see this is thicker and here it is thinner. So, this is addition. So, here it is thinner and here you move thicker it is subtraction. So, you can add blocks, you can subtract the angle the block from the base angle and then you can try to generate different angles for measurement. Again here we use the concept of ringing to form the, the angle. At first seen it is impossible to measure hundreds of thousands of angles with few blocks, but it may be possible by addition and subtraction of these blocks. The angle blocks may be rung together in various combinations just like slip gauges. One end of, of each angle block is marked plus while the opposite is marked minus. So, you will have a taper 
okay. They are so designed that they may be combined in plus or minus position. So, you can have plus and minus. So, you can have minus and plus. So, it, it subtracts and generates the angle. Two narrow ends together provides an addition of individual angles which narrow end lies opposite to each other provides a subtraction angle. So, this is what we saw here. So, it can be addition, it can be subtraction. So, thus given 0 to 90 degrees 59 minutes 59 seconds in steps of uh, you can get in that steps of seconds. So, here what we do is we try to take 45 degrees right. So, let us take this is positive and then the arrow is towards this. So, this is negative. So, 45 minus 3 which leads to 42 and then here we try to take 30 degrees okay, 30 minutes and then we also take 5 minutes both are in the same direction. So, we get 35 and then we also take 20 minutes. So, this is there. So, it is 42 degrees 35 minutes and 20 seconds which can be developed by the combination of different different angles looking into the direction we either add or subtract. So, that is why it is called as a combination of angle gauges. So, application it is a quick measurement of angle between two surfaces in engineering industry. A frequent use of angle gauge is to check whether the component is within within its off angle tolerance. For the measurement of an angle more than 90 degrees by using precision squares, something like L square we use. So, that is what uh, along with angle. So, this is what we showed here a combination. Okay. So, you can use this along with the combination of this to generate the various angles. Okay. Angles are more accurate than sin bar. These angles are more accurate than sin bar because sin bar involves trigonometric formula. So, here it is not so and procedure for setting angles with the angle gauge is less complex compared to sin bar. So, let us take this as a question an angle of 39 degrees 9 minutes 15 seconds is to be measured with the help of the following standard angle gauges. So, it is 1, 3, 9, 27 and 41 we are supposed to generate 33. So, what are the possibilities 33 can be generated by uh, 27 plus 3 plus 1. So, it is not coming plus 3 plus 1 it is not coming to 33. So, the next combination is 33 we can try to take it as 27 plus 9. So, 27 plus 9 is 36. 36 minus 3 degrees is one possibility, 27 plus 9 minus 6 is one possibility we can do. So, let us do that. So, what we have done is we take a flat plate. So, first we try to make 27 degrees. So, this is 27 degrees and let us make this and then next is 9 we make 9 again in this direction. So, we said minus 3. So, we put 3 here. So, 3 this is minus. So, what we have done is we have got this as 33. Now, the next thing is 9 minutes you want. So, 9 minutes directly you have 9 minutes. So, I add a I add a 9 minutes here. So, I add a 9 minutes in this direction. So, directly 9 minutes is got. So, no problem and then I need to have 15 seconds what I can do is I can generate it as 18 minus 3 I can get it done. So, I will add 18 in the same direction and then I will subtract 3 in this direction. So, now what I have got is the angle which is 33 degrees 9 minutes and 15 seconds. So, this is addition and you can see this is subtraction we try to get and this is how the answer is got. Okay. Then we move to spirit levels. A spirit level is a basic bubble instrument. The spirit level as you are aware is an angle measuring device in which the bubble always moves. So, it is something like this. 
you have a bubble ok. So, you have graduations. So, this is a bubble which moves bubble which moves and here is the graduation glass tube. So, a spirit as you are aware is an angular measuring device in which the bubble always moves to the highest point of the gas vial. The base called the reference plane, so this is the reference plane is sitting on a machine part for which the straightness or the flatness can be determined. So, maybe it can come up to here right. So, it can be when the base is horizontal the, the bubble rests at the center of the graduated scale. The performance of the spirit level is governed by geometric relationship between the bubble and the two references. So, these are various spirit levels which are available today in the market. So, the first spirit level uh, the first reference is effect of gravity and the second one is scale against the bubble in reading. So, first we try to put it as against the flat surface measure the angle and then try to take the reading. A clinometer is a special case of spirit level because generally in a spirit level what happens we would always try to have a smaller angle. So, this will be something like this and you will have a, this will be the 0 point and maybe here you will have maximum 10 degrees and this side you will have 10 degrees. These are the maximum graduation shape. If you want to measure a very large area then you cannot use a spirit level. So, it so this clinometer comprises it uh, comprises a level mounted on a frame so that the frame may turn may be turned on any desired angle with respect to a horizontal reference. So, here the accuracy can go up to 1 uh, minute. So, are used to determine the straightness flatness of surfaces they are also used to set incli inclinable tables of jig boring machine and angular jobs on surface grinding for machining. So, we use this clinometer. So, you can see that. So, here we can try to change the angle lock it like your uh, bevel protractor here is an angle and here is the subdivision. So, you can try to get the base angle and then the minute uh, the reading you can get it from here. So, this is more precise for a larger angle we use this clinometer. The next topic of discussion is going to be autocollimeter. So, autocollimeter is an optical instrument that is used to measure small angles to very high precision. Till now what we were measuring is we were measuring it degree then we went to minute and then we were talking about second. So, if you want to be more sensitive in second level and in minute level then we always used autocollimeter. Autocollimeter has a wide variety of application including a precision alignment, deduction of angular movement, verification of angle standards and angular monitoring over long period can be done by an autocollimeter. So, when I say autocollimeter, so moment I say collie, so then there has to be a light. So, in autocollimeter we use a beam of collimated light. Uh, reflection is used. So, this is an autocollimeter. So, what we do is we try to eliminate light this is a beam splitter. So, it goes hits at a, at the object or at reference and then this gets projected back this is reconstructed and then we watch it through the eyepiece. So, this is illumination in the eyepiece what you have is the before the eyepiece you have a cross wire and then this is projected and this is reflected. So, the light comes from here goes to the beam splitter it splits the, the light and half of it goes this way and it tries to hit at the surface and then it comes back they get reconstructed and you can see it uh, at the uh, eyepiece and then you can subsequently see it in the in the eyepiece side. So, here you will have a cross wire which is seen. So, if you look at it very clearly you see the y is getting displaced from the center to a corner and why is this displacement? This displacement is because the reference plate or the mirror which is kept on the work piece this is a work piece. So, this is at an angle so reflection happens. So, there is a displacement. So, this is the delta y which is used to measure the angle in terms of displacement we can try to get it. So, very small angles can be measured using a autocollimeter. The external reflecting uh, the reflector reflects all or part of the beam back into the instrument where the beam is focused and detected by a photo detector. The autocollimeter measured the deviation between the emitted beam and the reflected beam because of the autocollimeter use of light to measure an angle we, we can test it 
for a very long distance and try to get the output. Thank you very much.